Hello, everybody. I'm gonna thank you for coming with us today to meet Piat Berskowski and Agnieszka, his um, amazing translator. So we are going to do our, our third mentor meetup. It's with our first place winner of the visual arts category of the Engage Art Contest 2022. I've just really been looking forward to this. Piat is such an interesting person and the way that he approaches art and faith are deep and profound and, and just seriously interesting. And then on top of that, he's a really nice guy. So I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about him before we bring him onto the screen. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> Piat Barskowski has created a new artistic technique called New Stained Glass. It's a fusion of macro and micro photography, which we're going to be showing you, photography and digital design. So he, it's so interesting. He actually paints, quote unquote, paints with the micro photography. And I'm going to have him explain it to you instead of trying to show you the images and explain it myself because... It's, you really need to him to tell you about it. Um, so any of you who work with Adobe Illustrator know about vectors and vector lines. And he, he creates a cartoon using those vector lines and digitally from a photograph. Okay. Um, so in addition to being a really super interesting artist, Piat is a lecturer and a researcher at the University of Applied Sciences in Tarnow, Poland, as well as the founder and president of the Pegasus Art Foundation. Um, and Tarnow, by the way, is the warmest city in Poland. So if you want to go to Poland and you don't like the cold, that might be the place to go. Um, according to TVP World in 2021, they talked about The Last Supper 2021, which is the piece we'll be talking about most today. Um, and they say that Piat set biblical history in the 21st century, presenting a contemporary perspective on the events from the upper room. In his work, he proposed a new composition arrangement and a staggering perspective. And I have to agree with him there. So Piat was born in 1972 in Tarnow, Poland. He has a doctor of arts. He's a visual artist, a photographer, visual communications designer. You've got to go to his website and look at all the amazing um, logos he's created. It's really wonderful. He's also a theologian and an educator, so an uh, all-round Renaissance man. He graduated from two Krakow universities, the Academy of the Fine Arts and the Pontifical University of John Paul II. He specialized in the field of visual communications and the history of sacred art. And that certainly shows in the art that he creates. Um, he's created branding for more than 500 companies. Piat is a member of the Association of Polish Art Photographers and a member of the Association of Polish Artists and Designers. Besides winning first place in the 2022 Engage Art Contest, visual arts category, um, The Last Supper 20, 2021 also won first place in the Florence Biennale in the New Media Arts Division. So amazing things that Piat has done. And now let's, um, let's say hello to Piat and Agnesia. Is that, am I saying your name correctly? Agnes. Anishka. Okay. I'm not going to get it. It's taken me, you know, two months to get Barskowski, but I think I've got that one now. <laughs> hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. How are you guys doing today? I'm fine. And you? Perfect. <laughs> and you? I'm great. Um, and it's evening in Poland? Almost. Um, 5 p.m. 5 p.m. Okay, <laughs> wonderful. Um, I, let's see, let me make sure I show this. Um, so, Pia, I'm hoping that the first thing we can do is jump right in to Last Supper 2021 and have you 
walk us through your thinking and what this is about and how you, um, what you were hoping to do and also just the process of how it happened. Is that good for you? Okay. I'm okay. Ready. I'm ready. Okay. okay. I'm going to pull, oops, you know, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, hmm, give me just a minute here. There we go. I am going to pull this up and we'll show this part. This is this whole section will be about Last Supper 2021 um, and the things that we've got here. Now, I, it looks like we have someone in the stream. So I someone else in the stream probably who wants to ask a question a little later. So, Chris, I'm going to keep you backstage for now. And when it's time for questions, I'll bring you in. For now, let's talk about Last Supper 2021. You're on, Piat. Okay, we're looking at this work uh, in total. Bez without any details. I w takiej skali nie widać technicznej warstwy obrazu. Mm -hmm. And looking in this scale only, we cannot see uh, the technical sphere of the whole work. W całości wygląda jak obraz, jak obraz renesansowy, barokowy. Mm -hmm. Because in total it looks like a baroque painting. And renaissance. Uh, and renaissance painting. Z przyciemnieniem, które nazywa się tenebryzmem w łacinie. Okay, with tenebryzm from uh, Latin, tenebr. Dark darkness. Charakterystyczne dla na przykład e, Rembrandta. Mm -hmm, which is typical of Rembrandt. I Caravaggio. And Caravaggio. Od strony technicznej, gdy przybliżymy obraz, mm -hmm. popatrzymy na detale. Mm -hmm. At a closer view, when we look at the details from technical perspective. Coraz więcej będziemy widzieć wypełnienia kolażu. Mm -hmm. We see more and more details of and, fulf and fulfillment of this collage. I ta techniczna strona to jest dokładnie collage cyfrowy, fotograficzny. Mm -hmm. And looking from the technical perspective, the whole work is a digital collage. Collage specjalnej fotografii. A collage uh, of photography. Makro i mikro. Mm -hmm. Z, e, tworzone jest z mikroskopu i z bardzo bliska, nawet telefonem, smartfonem. Mm -hmm. Ok, so combining phot photographs uh, of micro and macro uh, photography, so by use of microscope and by use even of a small telephone. E, przy mikroskopie były to powiększenia od 200 do 2000 razy. Mm -hmm. Uh, when it comes to microscope, there were enlarge, en, enlargement uh, by how many? Yeah, 2000 times even. A w makro to tak jak każdy z nas może telefonem, smartfonem robić zdjęcia z około centymetra, dwóch centymetrów. Whereas in uh, macro photography, uh, it is like uh, taking photos by using a telephone from very, very close distance. I teraz chciałem powiedzieć o czymś bardzo ważnym. Co było fotografowane, czyli chleb i wino. Okay, and now I'm, I would like to focus on the most important elements which were photographed. Those were bread and wine. I w tym momencie przechodzimy well, do I'm going to go to that part of the slideshow so it's easier for people to follow you. Mm -hmm. There we go. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are uh, examples of photos, uh, my, macro and micro 
photos of bread and wine. W tym momencie bardzo miękko przechodzimy od warstwy technicznej do teologicznej. Mm-hmm. And in this way I would like to go smoothly from the technical aspect of my work to theological one. Dlatego, że nie przez przypadek mamy tutaj chleb i wino jako symbole ustanowienia przez Jezusa Eucharystii. Yeah, because it is not a coincidence that uh, I chose bread and wine as uh, the key elements of the Last Supper and the Eucharist. Gdybyśmy mogli jeszcze popatrzeć na te zdjęcia uh, makro i mikro wybranych. Uh, yeah, can we have the second look at those micro and macro photos? Oh, thank you. Thank you, yes. Uh, Widzimy u góry pas z fotografią wina, mm-hmm. zarówno pod mikroskopem, jak i zdjęcia makro w kieliszku. Mm-hmm. This, the first row is the photos of wine taken either separately or in a glass. Szczególnie ciekawe są zdjęcia pod mikroskopem, bo okazało się, że wino nie jest czyste. <laughs> Especially interesting were photos taken uh, under microscope, because it turned out that wine wasn't that pure. Wręcz pływają w winie drzazgi. Drewno. <laughs> yeah, even uh, I noticed some uh, strips uh, of, of wood. Specjaliści od wina enolodzy mówią, że właśnie te drzazgi sprawiają, że rozpoznajemy smaki, gatunki wina. Mm-hmm. Wine specialists describe those small pieces of wood. Those are the key elements, thanks to which we can uh, differentiate, describe uh, the origin of wine. Podczas gdy przy fotografii chleba Pojawiły się niespodziewane dla mnie, a też dla specjalistów od mikroskopów, nowe światy, scenografie jak z filmu science fiction. <laughs> Whereas while uh, taking uh, photographs by, uh, with the use of microscope, the photographs of bread, uh, I discovered simply new worlds in front of my eyes, uh, as if uh, straight, straight taken from uh, Science fiction. Science fiction uh, scripts and films. Przy mniejszym powiększeniu 200 razy zaczęła wychodzić pleśń. Ale to jest ta dobra pleśń, którą możemy jeść. Zdrowa. Ok. In the case of a smaller enlargement, I could see, uh, what do you say, it's uh, fungus in English? Yep. I'm not sure. Yeah. Fungus or mold? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly this. Like yeah, mild, mildew, fungus, uh, rather mildew. Uh, te banki, te, uh, takie mm-hmm. łezki, te yeah, especially te... if we have a look at those bubbles. Przy większym yeah. powiększeniu tysiąc razy zaczęły się pojawiać kratery i takie przestrzenie fantastyczne. When the enlargement was bigger, so about one thousand times, I could see craters. I teraz podzielę się pewnym odkryciem. Przy powiększeniu dwóch tysięcy razy i większym zaczęły się pojawiać obrazy bardzo podobne do tych, które widzimy patrząc w kosmos z mgławicami. Mm-hmm. Ok, uh, when the enlargement was uh, over 2000, I could see some elements which resembled nebulae in the cosmos. <laughs> I to było bardzo duże zaskoczenie, jednocześnie jest to temat do dyskusji filozoficzno-teologiczne i naukowe. Mm-hmm. It came as a big surprise for me and I believe that this is a very good topic for theological discussion. To, co widzimy jako malutkie pod mikroskopem jest bardzo podobne do tego, co oglądamy daleko. Mm-hmm. Blisko i daleko okazuje się, że możemy zobaczyć 
bardzo podobne obrazy. Yes, so in conclusion, what we see under a microscope, so as a very, very tiny, resembles something which is in this open space in the cosmos. Incredible. Jeżeli chodzi o konstrukcję, jeszcze o temat techniczny, to posługuje się programem graficznym takim jak Illustrator i Corel. As far as constructing my work goes, uh, I use a Corel and Corel, Corel. Corel and uh, Illustrator. Illustrator programs. Tworzę uh, wektory, mm -hmm. tak jak tu widzimy na tym przykładzie, zarys konkretny uh, rysunku, symboli, znaków, atrybutów. Mm -hmm. So I create vectors, a general sketch of uh, my drawings, my um, attributes, elements, elements. elements. I następnie wypełniam je fragmentami fotografii, które wcześniej mam przygotowane. And then I fill those sketches with fragments of my photographs, previously prepared. Kilka tysięcy zdjęć chleba i wina dzielę na banki fotografii według barw podstawowych i pochodnych. Several thousands of those photographs I divide into certain banks of photos, dividing them in respect of colors, structures. I wybieram trochę textures, yes, yes. I wybieram według tego, co tutaj w tym momencie powinno być i kolor, i struktura, faktura. O, faktura to jest dobre słowo. Okay, and then I select, depending on what I really need in this particular image, sketch, what kind of texture I need as well. I w tym sensie, w cudzysłowie, jest to malowanie ponieważ posługuje się barwami i fakturą. Mm -hmm. So in this uh, sense, it is like simple painting, because I use colors and I use textures. Mm -hmm. Jeżeli chodzi o same kształty, no to bardzo często y, w tym przypadku są to i znaki, i symbole, i atrybuty, i metafory. Mm -hmm. uh, I also use uh, symbols, attributes, metaphors, When it comes to attributes, allegories. Is this the right image to show to talk about that? Yes, thank you. Na pierwszym zdjęciu mamy plamę, która ma potrójne znaczenie. The first picture shows a stain, which has a triple meaning. Po pierwsze, jest to rozlane wino na obrusie. First of all, it is just a wine stain. Po drugie, jest to krew Chrystusa. Secondly, this is Christ's blood. Na krzyżu. A o tym później jeszcze powiem, ponieważ powinniśmy się doszukać Chrystusa wiszącego na krzyżu. Yeah, and the third is Christ's wound, one of Yeah, on the on the cross, and later on we will also find in the whole image all of those wounds of Christ. The six stoles we discover Christ on the cross if we suggest we are drinking wine or his blood. So in a way, by looking at those six tables which form the Christ cross on those six tables. We can trace Christ Himself by looking at those wounds. Przy bardzo dużym powiększeniu. Obviously, if we look at a more enlargement, bigger enlargement, so we can see, we can notice those wounds on separate tables. Okay. Are there any on this first table? On the first table, do you see? No. Uh, not no. on the first, but uh, the left one, we can see, the very right, right. 
the lower middle. And yeah, by a plate and uh, the bottom one next to a glass. Very cool. <laughs> can we, yeah, okay, to those. Uh, can we return to those uh, slides with symbols and attributes? Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Na drugim zdjęciu ilustracji mamy klucze. To chyba każdy się domyśla, że to są współczesne klucze świętego Piotra do raju. Yeah, the second photo depicts uh, the car keys, car key, and everyone, I'm sure that everyone realizes that this is like Saint Peter's uh, contemporary Saint Peter's key. <laughs> Pod spodem w tym rubinie, który ma 12 ścian. Okay, just below the key in this uh, stone of Rubin. Yeah, am I right? Rubin. The red one. Uh, yeah, this stone is with 12 uh, sides. This is not octa, this is yeah, yeah. septa something. Yeah, uh, anyway, this is the stone with 12 sides. Jest to figura platońska which is a platonic solid, one of, one of the platonic solids. We know five and this is one of them. Ona jest odpowiedzialna za, e, za wszechświat, yeah, za and this, the, Yeah, and this uh, platonic solid uh, represents uh, spirituality and uh, the universe. Mądrość wszechświata and the uh, wisdom of the universe as well. A także duchowość. And spirituality. Poniżej mamy mm. kartę bankomatową. Yeah, below we've got a credit card. Jako nową sakiewkę, symbol, atrybut Judasza. Okay, uh, okay, a contemporary attribute of Judas. We even have his uh, name printed. Iskariota. 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 Golden card. This is golden. This card. is a golden card. <laughs> so like the pieces of gold instead of pieces of silver. Exactly. Na lewo od tego zdjęcia mamy muszlę. Yes, on the left of this credit card uh, there is a shell, seashell. To jest atrybut świętego Jakuba. The attribute of Saint James. A jednocześnie pod spodem, pod muszlą jest wyznacznik, określenie spirali Fibonacciego. Yeah, and below it uh, there is the Fibonacci spiral uh, coming from sequence, yes? Yes, Fibonacci wynikającym sequence. też ze złotego tego podziału. Mm -hmm. Related to uh, a golden ratio. Wyżej mamy chleb rozdarty na pół. Mm -hmm. And above it there is bread which is torn in half apart. I jest to szczególny, specyficzny znak polski dla Polaków, bo jest to i kształt polski mm -hmm. i kształt Wisły, naszej głównej rzeki. In its shape it resembles the shape of Poland territory which is divided with uh, the Vistula River. Na dole gdzieś tam jest Tarnów, znajdziecie miejsce w Polsce. Somewhere in the south <laughs> there is Tarnów that we come from. <laughs> Our city. Jeszcze wrócę do pierwszej fotografii, fragmentu z plamą krwi, wina. Okay, I would like to go back to the first photo, to this stain of glass, the stain of uh, wine ponieważ nie powiedziałem o trzecim symbolu. Because I didn't uh, tell you about the third symbol. Więc teraz mówię, ta plama jest jednocześnie płomieniem. This stain ogniem. Is uh, at the same time fire. Po pierwsze to jest krew, po drugie to jest wino, albo na odwrót, bo mówiłem najpierw o winie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the first meaning is Wine. wine, the second is blood, blood. and uh, 
I po trzecie jest to płomień. Yes, simply fire flame, my brother flame. Ponieważ, mm. proszę zwrócić uwagę, jaki tam jest rysunek. Jednocześnie pod dłonią świętego Jakuba i pod tym płomieniem. To jest plan katedry Notre Dame. Yes, uh, because uh, under uh, the, the palm, the hand, we can see the architectural plan of Notre, Notre Dame Cathedral. Żeby upamiętnić to commemorate tragiczne wydarzenie. The tragic fire. Pożar. Mm -hmm. Jest to tak zwane signum temporis, w łacinie się tak nazywa znaki czasu. Mm -hmm. Umiejscowienie pewnego wydarzenia, które się działo wtedy, kiedy artysta tworzył pracę. Mm -hmm. For me personally, it was like a signum temporis, the sign of time. So the event which took place at the time of creation. That during the time the artist was creating his uh, work, uh, a certain event took place. No, to może przejdziemy teraz do następnych. <laughs> We, um, when the cathedral burned, so many artists were talking about when they saw it or their experience or putting up photos of them as young people going through Europe and it's one of the, the places you've just got to see. So it's so interesting that you memorialize that moment in the painting as well. Na następnym fragmencie <coughs> widzimy kwadrat magiczny. Okay, uh, the next image, this is next to the key, on the right of the key, uh, this depicts uh, the magic square. Yes, magic, magic square. square. Uh, z, z, chciałem mi w powiedzieć. Mm -hmm. uh, z liczbą, która się sumuje po przekątnej w pionie w poziomie do 33. Okay, uh, with the numbers which, uh, by adding up, Uh, by adding out those numbers, we reach the sum of 33. 33. Uh, I proszę teraz, może Teresa, może ktoś, kto nas ogląda, zgadnie, kogo to może być uh, atrybut oznaczenia. <laughs> And I have a question to our viewers. Maybe some of you will try to guess whose attribute is this magic square? Whose? Whose? Kto miał lat 33? Uh, okay, so maybe you can talk about one more of these symbols and we'll move on to the rest of what you want to say because otherwise we won't get to our questions. Okay, okay, okay. Czekamy na odpowiedzi, tak? No, nie musimy przejść do następnych, dobrze, dlatego to, że się nie wyrobimy. Dobrze, dobrze. No to, to jest znak Chrystusa oczywiście, który miał 33 yes. lata. Yeah, obviously, this was uh, the magic square uh, symbolizes uh, the attribute of Christ, who was 33 years old. And okay. we had one person who said it on Facebook before you did, so I think <laughs> that is from now, from here, but I think we need to get to where she is. Congratulations. Następna ilustracja to jest figura niemożliwa. The next is on the right of the uh, magic square is impossible figure. Do we say like this impossible figure? Czyli taki przedmiot, który można jedynie narysować, nie można go stworzyć fizycznie. Okay, which means that this is the object we can only draw, we cannot create it physically. Zastosowałem go po to, żeby powiedzieć uh, o tajemnicy wszystkich tajemnic, czyli uh, no Pewnych rzeczy nie będziemy wiedzieć nigdy. Mm -hmm. My intention was to say uh, that there are things which are inexplicable and uh, mysterious and we will never know the answers. A następnej fotografii nice. jest powiększenie paru nut, kilku nut, mm -hmm. melodii. Okay, the next uh, image, the next photo depicts a few music notes. 
Nie ma chaosu w dwie części. No to na tej dolnej. Uh, uh, losing notes are at the bottom. Z pięciolinią, to chyba mm-hmm. widzą wszyscy. Mm-hmm. To jest melodia, którą skomponowałem dla słów Judasza. Dlaczego ja powiedz mi panie? Okay, and uh, this is the melody I composed uh, to Judas's words. Uh, Dlaczego ja powiedz mi panie? Why me? Tell me, tell me, Lord. Nie za noce, bo nie, <laughs> lepiej nie, ale jest to smutna melodia. I'm not going to present this melody, but it is uh, rather sad. Z- Znam teorię kompozycji w plastyce i wiem, jak zakomponować obraz, żeby był smutnym obrazem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know uh, how to compose the pa- painting, the image in art to make it sad. Mm. I przy okazji uh, odkryłem, że w teorii muzyki też są pewne uh, zasady, które tak samo mogą spowodować, że muzyka jest smutna lub wesoła. Mm-hmm. And I also discovered that in music there are also certain techniques, certain ways of creating sad music, just like in art, sad painting. Zastosowałem tę wiedzę, żeby taką smutną melodię. So I used my knowledge of an artist to compose the music, the melody. Bo ta praca, ostatnia wieczerza XXI wieku, jest ode mnie przede wszystkim o Judaszu. Because the whole work, which I created, is first of all about Judas. Jego bardzo trudnej sytuacji. And his very difficult situation. Jak wiemy z Biblii, był człowiekiem zaufania. Był człowiekiem dobrym, któremu wszyscy apostołowie ufali. Mm-hmm. As we know from the Bible, that this was the man of total trust. Uh, all apostles uh, believed in him, trusted him. Wiemy też, że był skarbnikiem. Uh, we also know that he was a treasurer. Uh, powiedziałbym, że to jest wręcz niemożliwe, żeby on chciał. Uh, uh, żeby się skusił na, na pieniądze, ponieważ miał ich pod dostatkiem, mógł zdefraudować pieniądze, które mu apostołowie przekazywali. We can even assume that as a treasurer, how could he have been um, deceived to betrayal? How could he have uh, been tempted to do the thing? Uh, the man of uh, trust, of confidence, Um, treasurer. Moim zdaniem Judasz był w bardzo głębokiej hipnozie pod działaniem szatana. Mm-hmm. I believe that Judas was taken under a deep uh, hypnosis uh, from Satan. To było tak uh, mocne działanie, że dopiero gdy się otrząsnął, obudził z tego z tej hipnozy to zdał sobie sprawę z tego, co zrobił. Mm-hmm. I believe that only after he sort of woke up, came over the hypnosis, uh, he must have realized what he actually, what he had done. I wiemy, że bardzo, bardzo tego żałował. Miał takie głębokie poczucie winy, że odebrał sobie życie, popełnił samobójstwo. Mm-hmm. And we know that we, he couldn't cope with his remorses to the extent that he committed suicide. Zdajmy sobie sprawę z tego, że człowiek, który jest zły, ma złe intencje, nie żałuje swoich czynów i nie wpada w takie dołki, żeby aż odbierać sobie życie. Mm-hmm. We can assume that uh, any man who is uh, who is who is isn't bad. Uh, and has remorses after committing some uh, evil act, bad act, does not feel any remorses and is not, uh, we believe that he is willing to, um, how to say that? Yeah, so such a man, but I think that 
taki człowiek, który jest dobry, jak, jak jest niedobry, no to nie popełnia samobójstwa. Jak, nie jest, czuję, nie... jak, jest, nie, jak jest niedobry. Aha, okej, okay. I see your point. <laughs> nie ma poczucia winy. Yeah, nie żałuję tego, co zrobił. Piotr says that uh, any man who is uh, a bad man wouldn't commit a suicide. That's the conclusion. Nie ma poczucia winy. Okay. Because a bad man never feels guilty. So in in the end uh, he would never commit a suicide because he doesn't feel his guilt. To jest logiczne dowód na to, że on był dobrym człowiekiem. So there is a logical conclusion that Judas must have been a good man. Niestety my od dziecka wiemy kto jest zdrajcą. Yes, we are uh, raised in the faith and uh, that we know already uh, who was the traitor. Wiemy, że zdradził Judasz Jezusa. Mm. We know that this was Judas who betrayed Jesus. Niestety przez to, że to wiemy, to nigdy nie możemy sobie do końca wyobrazić tra tragizmu, dramatyzmu tej sytuacji. Mm. And because uh, we know already so we cannot imagine uh, the, the tragedy of a situation. Wszystkich uczestników, wszystkich apostołów, dlatego że wyobraźmy sobie teraz, że Jezus powiedział do wszystkich, jeden z was nie zdradzi. Nie powiedział od razu kto, tylko wszyscy się poczuli winni. We know now that this was Judas, but let's imagine the situation uh, during the Last Supper when Jesus told those words, one of you shall betray me, and he told it to, uh, without pointing to first to any, at anyone, so he told it to everyone, so everyone must have felt terrible. Można to porównać do współczesnej szkoły, gdy nauczyciel zaprasza na spotkanie na przykład do pizzerii uczniów i oznajmia im, że jeden z was mnie zdradził i że zaraz policja po mnie przyjedzie i będę uwięziony, torturowany. Okay, Piotr uh, compares uh, this situation to a contemporary situation when the teacher takes uh, pupils to the pizza restaurant. They are sitting, eating and all of a sudden the teacher says one of you will betray me. Przepraszam, nie jest to za zbyt mądre porównanie, bo nie można tutaj porównywać ale ono bardzo dobrze działa na wyobraźnię uczniów i studentów. Maybe it is not a fortunate uh, comparison, but whenever I use it, it perfectly affects uh, imagination and encourages and stimulates uh, imagination. Dopiero wtedy, gdy sobie wyobrażam taką sytuację, wczuwają się w tą atmosferę, co tam się działo. Zaraz o tym opowiem. Mm -hmm. And only then, when I uh, use this, let's say, shocking comparison, uh, my students start to think and to realize and to imagine the situation. Ponieważ mamy 12 uczniów, którzy są niewinni, kochają swojego nauczyciela, ufają mu, jest ich autorytetem i on nagle <laughs> mówi, że jeden z was mnie zdradzi. Yeah, because let's imagine the situation when there is the teacher, master, and there are 12 uh, disciples, and out of the blue, the teacher says, one of you uh, shall betray me. No i zdajmy sobie z tego sprawę, że oni są niewinni. And we now know that they are, uh, maybe not now, but we know that they are all innocent. Każdy ma, jak to my właśnie ludzie, każdy ma inny charakter, temperament. Inaczej zareaguje na, taką, na takie zdanie, na takie właściwie oskarżenie. And let's imagine that each of the disciples has a different character, personality. Each of them will react differently to this accusation. Let's say accusation. Jeden uczeń skurczy się, zacznie płakać, bo jest introwertykiem. Mm -hmm. One of the disciples, uh, as an introvert, uh, 
uh, could have uh, hide himself. Poor mm. cat. Mm. Could start. Could have started crying. Zamknie się w sobie. Będzie to tłumił w sobie. Will shut himself. And bottle the feelings. Inni ekstrawertyk e, zacznie się oburzać, gestykulować. E, prawie że będzie chciał pobić nauczyciela, co on za zarłupoty gada. Yeah, whereas extrovertics, extroverts will react totally in a totally different way. They would, uh, using gestures, they will probably, they would shout, uh, object. Tak czy inaczej, wszyscy byli bardzo, bardzo poruszeni. Nie tylko jeden Judasz. But anyway, I'm sure that all of them must have been really, really uh, touched, uh, how to say? Impacted? Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So, I am so sorry that I did not make this a two hour live, but I'm going to have to um, move us on or else we won't get any of our questions in. And I, I promised people that we would do that. So um, before we start our, our just our questions that we have written out, I'm going to see um, if Chris, Chris, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Chris, did you have a question for Piot? First thing I'd like to say is bravo to the intricacy of the creativity that went into this. Thank you. What, what was the timetable? I, I, I kind of read it took years for you to do this, but when when is the entire timetable of this of this piece of work? Jak wyglądało rozplanowanie całego dzieła przez te wszystkie lata? Tak. Pierwsza myśl, pierwszy pomysł pojawił się jeszcze, gdy byłem uczniem liceum plastycznego. Ok, the first idea of the whole work came to me when I was a student of secondary school of art. To było 30 lat temu. It was 30 years ago. Wtedy nie mogłem się oderwać od tego modelu spopularyzowanego przez Leonardo da Vinci, czyli długiej ławy, długiego stołu. At that time, uh, I couldn't leave this image and reverse from the image, traditional image of Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci. W tamtym czasie też naiwnie myślałem, że jedynie Leonardo da Vinci stworzył ostatnią wieczorę. To była tak popularna praca. Uh, Leonardo Dzień. da Vinci's Last Supper was so popular that I, uh, as a very naive, young person, I even believed that this was the only Last Supper created. Przez lata studiów dowiedziałem się, że znacznie więcej było autorów, którzy poruszyli ten temat, ten motyw. Yeah, uh, during my studies I learned that there were much more Last Suppers created in art. Poznałem pracę Tintoretta, włoskiego renesansowego artysty, który pokazał, że po pierwsze można stworzyć kompozycję inną niż ta z długą ławą oraz pokazał mi, że można pokazać więcej osób niż Jezusa i apostołów. Another artist who showed me how to depict Last Supper differently was Tintoretto, because he showed that we can present Last Supper differently with another number of apostles. Ale i tak wciąż drugi stół był takim elementem, od którego nie można było się oderwać i stworzyć czegoś nowego, rzeczywiście nowego. Tintoretto also showed me that it doesn't have to be a long table, but still I, I believe and I still think that this long table is the most popular depiction of Last Supper. To jest tak... <coughs> znany i mocny kanon w sztuce, że widać, że do dziś artyści nie mogą się uwolnić od niego i na różne sposoby przedstawiają postaci, ale wciąż za tą długą ławą. This is the most popular image of Last Supper, which has the heaviest impact on art, because even throughout the whole years and ages, Uh, there were many uh, depictions of Last Supper, but still 
most artists cannot free themselves from Leonardo da Vinci's depiction. Do dziś wszyscy patrząc na jego dzieło i podobne myślimy, że tak wyglądała ostatnia wieczerza, spotkanie w wieczorniku 2000 lat temu. And we also still, still believe uh, that Leonardo da Vinci's uh, image painting was how really uh, the Last Supper in the Seneca looked like. Teraz powiem Państwu taką ciekawostkę, że Włosi mieli największą swobodę w przedstawianiu motywów biblijnych. Mieli tam słabą inkwizycję po prostu, więc pozwalali sobie na wiele albo za dużo. I to, co my znamy jako ten długi stół da Vinciego i innych artystów, to jest pomyłka. Włosi pomylili wygląd ostatniej wieczerzy z kaną galilejską, z weselem. Ten stół to jest stół z biesiady weselnej. Okay, uh, there is an interesting thing that uh, Italy was the country where maybe Inquisition didn't operate well, so it was the most liberal country for artists, for artistic uh, expression. And uh, this Last Supper presented by Leonardo da Vinci, da Vinci was a mistake because actually this long table uh, resembled rather uh, the image from uh, uh, the marriage, the wedding uh, reception in uh, Cana. Cana in English. Okay, uh, this wedding reception during which Christ uh, turned uh, water into wine. So it rather looked like uh, the wedding reception table. To był znany kanon weselny. No, do dziś, jak są wesela w lecie organizowane pod gołym niebem, to właśnie w ten sposób łączy się stoły, układa się długi stół, gdzie siedzi para młoda i najbliżsi z rodziny, rodzice i najbliższa rodzina. And the thing is, we imitate this uh, canon, this image of long table at our contemporary wedding receptions. Bo jest troszeczkę za dużo na początek. No to może być, jeszcze o tych symbolach. Ale po kolei jak y, y, przez te 30 lat Aha, powstała dobrze, praca. No dobrze, nie? dobrze. E, I żeby... Od... I, I'm sorry because I, uh, had, I have to discipline a little bit the artist. <laughs> because he, pro no, because he promised to present the timetable step by step. Okay. Dlatego mnie też trudno było pomyśleć o innej kompozycji, ale tak przez wiele lat, jak robiłem, tworzyłem szkice, to w końcu dostałem też podpowiedź w trakcie snu. To było bardzo ważne, że ta wizja, perspektywa Ducha Świętego, perspektywa ptasia też się mówi w sztuce, przyśniła mi się i to, było, to był bardzo duży postęp. Taką podpowiedź dostałem od Ducha Świętego, prawdopodobnie. Mm -hmm. uh, a huge step was uh, my dream, because in fact I, I dreamt of uh, the Last Supper uh, image, the way I, I wanted to, to show Last Supper. Uh, and I dreamt of this uh, Holy Spirit uh, perspective, or even this uh, I bird's view perspective, which is in my work, because uh, as we can see, uh, we can uh, see those uh, apostles uh, from above. And I dreamt of it. It was my dream. I woke up and I knew that this would be uh, my image. Dziś uczniowie mówią studenci, że to jest perspektywa drona. Yeah, uh, as I said, uh, I use the term I by I view, but nowadays students use rather a drone's perspective. <laughs> Jeszcze wracając do tego snu, to gdy studiowałem teologię, to jeden z wykładowców powiedział takie mądre zdanie, że jeżeli będziemy długo, intensywnie nad czymś myśleć, próbować odpowiedzieć na, na jakieś pytanie, to w końcu Duch Święty nam pomoże we śnie. Mm -hmm. Uh, coming back to, to my dream, uh, I was uh, 
instructed by one of my uh, theology professors that whenever we uh, think about something really, really deeply, so in the end we will get the answer uh, from the Holy Spirit, tak maybe się, in a dream as well. Tak się dokładnie stało. And it, and it, it happened to me. Gdy już wiedziałem, jaka będzie perspektywa, jaki widok rzut z góry, to zacząłem to łączyć z wiedzą, którą zdobyłem na studiach artystycznych. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I knew that my whole work, image painting, will be from the uh, bird's eye view, so I started to to engage all uh, knowledge or techniques uh, I learned during my artistic studies. Chodzi o ciąg Fibonacciego, spirale Fibonacciego, mm-hmm. chodzi o złoty podział. I mean a golden ratio, Fibonacci sequence and spiral. Figury geometryczne, ich siatki, mm-hmm. cała geometria z matematyki. Mm, geometric figures, all mathematic, mathematicians knowledge a także no, kierunki psychologiczne w kompozycji. Mm-hmm. Psychological? Tak, jest. And even psychological... Um, psychological... Uh, movements uh, in art. Kierunki. Chris, that was a that got us off on an excellent conversation. Thank you so much. I think Thank I you. would love having Piat as a professor because he's my favorite kind that goes off in all these different great directions and you just don't want it to end. But I'm gonna have to redirect now. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you. Um, and I'm just gonna I, I'm gonna have to abbreviate the questions that I was gonna ask, but this was so much better. Thank you so much for being so free with your information and wisdom. Um, so I want to ask, where can I get back to my questions? Um, how can artists get better at their art? How can artists get better at the art? Czyli to pytanie, to jak tak, artysta, no to, ale jak on może... To czy chodzi o e, religię, czy o sztukę? <laughs> Piotr e, asks whether e, you mean art or religion. <laughs> czy to i to? O both. O. Well, uh, the one that I, I would have done better was how does your art influence your faith or how is your faith influenced by your art? But because you've talked so much about your art, I thought I might ask uh, our, about your faith. I thought I might ask about the art itself, but you can give whatever answer you would like. Jak to chodzi ci bardziej o sztukę czy o religię? Tak naprawdę to jest bądź. Ale jak? Poprzez um, poszukiwanie. To to, co się mówiłem wcześniej, że poszukuję e, w sztuce różnych rozwiązań, przede wszystkim piękna. I tak muszę też uczniów, żeby poszukiwali piękna do siebie. Piękno i prawdy, prawda, dobro i piękno. Mm-hmm. I think that the answer is simple. It is by searching, constant searching uh, the beauty and the truth. <laughs> That's a beautiful answer. So then what would you say to the question of talent versus hard work? Which is more important for an artist or an artist of faith? Jedno i drugie. The both. Both. <laughs> <laughs> but equally 50-50? Yes. Okay, That's good. That's good. No exception. Nie ma wyjątków. No i tu można by powiedzieć o tym złotym środku, że nie skrajnie, tylko... Mm-hmm. I believe, uh, I don't believe in any extremes, I believe in golden ratio. Ah, very no nice. Extremes. <laughs> very nice. So, <laughs> mentorship, have, have you had mentors? How important has mentorship been in your life? No to już wiesz, co chciałem powiedzieć. Gdy, gdy byłem młody, to byłem tak bezczelny i głupi, że uważałem, że nie potrzebuję mentorów. Okej. Okay. When I was, uh, my idea of mentorship, when I was young, I was that arrogant <laughs> and big headed that I believed <laughs> I didn't need any, any mentors in my life and it changed. 
Im więcej się uczyłem, tym więcej rozumiałem, tym więcej pytań zadawałem i jeszcze więcej, i jeszcze więcej. The more I studied, the more questions uh, arose and uh, I also asked more and more questions. Aż poczułem i na studiach teologicznych, i artystycznych, projektowych, jak ważny jest mentor. So then I discovered how important a mentor is. To byli moi promotorzy i na tych, i na tych studiach. Those were my uh, supervisors at academies. Mm -hmm. Dziś z przyjemnością przekazuję swoją wiedzę Uczniom, przepraszam, nie swoją, tylko tą, którą zdobyłem od mentorów, przekazuję dalej. To jest największa satysfakcja. Ok, and today it is a great pleasure for me to pass on the knowledge I have acquired, possess to my students, and it is the biggest satisfaction. Hmm, that's so nice. Bill Bantz, who is the founder of Engage Art, um, often tells us and ten wants us to remind artists that nobody starts at the top you know everybody starts with everything to learn um and and i really like the twist that you put on that though that the place where you had the most to learn is when you thought you had you had it all together you knew everything and i think all of us who are parents understand that that happens too <laughs> What, what was it? Somebody said, it's it's amazing how much a young adult learns from the time they leave home until the time they have their first apartment. Right? Not, not only did they learn so much, but evidently the parents are so much smarter at that point as well. <laughs> um, so you said that um, it's with mentoring your students, which you talk about a lot, and it's part of the blog that we have from you. Um, is is that the most fulfilled you have felt as an artist, as a mentor, or are there parts of your artistic life that have brought you that much fulfillment? Czy mentorzy mieli jakiś wpływ na to, na twoje spełnienie artystyczne? Tak, oczywiście. Of course, uh, I think that I. Uh, I feel fulfilled uh, also thanks to my mentors, but uh, there is a different question here. When have you felt most fulfilled? And should we, uh, should Piotr answer this? Mm -hmm. When, at what moment? No to jeszcze to pytanie. Kiedy czułeś największe spełnienie? W momencie, kiedy była sesja fotograficzna, kiedy tworzyliśmy ostatnią wieczerzę, kiedy przekazywałem swoją wiedzę, kiedy odczułem, że oni weszli w tą pracę, stali mm -hmm. się jej częścią. I think that this there was one moment especially uh, of this feeling of fulfillment, total fulfillment was during the photography session when I invited uh, so many people and they came and I started to engage all of them to involve in my work and all of them agreed and started to participate and became part of my work. Wtedy zauważyłem zachodzące w nich zmiany i do tej pory zauważam, jak to wpłynęło na nich pozytywnie. I also uh, noticed then uh, how my work influenced those people, how my work affected them and some even changed some some of them. Biskup Tarnowski pyta mnie, co robi, żeby przyciągnąć młodzież do kościoła, to ja mówię, żeby organizować konkursy i daję za przykład Engage Art. <laughs> okay, a bishop from our city once asked me uh, for some advice how to attract or reattract uh, young people to the church and I explained by organizing artistic events or participating uh, in contests like Engage Art Contest. <laughs> I'm with you there, absolutely. I have one more question for you. Um, it's a general question, but what is your advice for young Christians who are thinking about becoming artists? Tak, twoja rada dla młodych chrześcijan 
niektórzy myślą o stanie się o byciu artystami, ale są chrześcijanami. Tak, tak, no to widzę. No to czytać, czytać i studiować Biblię i fascynować się światem, światem ale z Biblii. Najpierw z Biblii, z mądrością i próbować sobie wyobrazić, malować w przypadku plastyków, tworzyć muzykę w przypadku muzyków. Mm-hmm. So read, read, study, uh, do research, uh, study the Bible especially for those who are uh, going to uh, become Christian artists mm-hmm. and observe and practice observe the world and uh, when it w- whether it comes to uh, painters or musicians so uh, based uh, the art on the bible study the bible first of all mam też studentów którzy deklarują się że są ateistami i im też polecam czytanie biblii nowego testamentu tylko pod jednym warunkiem wyobraźcie sobie że Jezus jest kolejnym znanym filozofem. Okay, uh, among my students there are also atheists and even to them I recommend uh, reading the Bible but uh, usually uh, I give them uh, advice uh, read the Bible but imagine uh, Jesus as another philosopher. I zaczynamy rozmawiać. I się okazuje, że ja więcej o Biblii, o Nowym Testamencie rozmawiam z ateistami. Very often the result is that I discussed more the matters of the Bible with the atheists, with those students, because they start to discuss. Studenci mi mówią, że no, gdyby tak było, no to on jest najlepszym z filozofów. Uh, and then they conclude that if I uh, am to imagine Jesus as another philosopher, so really it, he is the best philosopher ever. <laughs> Studenci się interesują bardzo filozofią, znają Arystotelesa, Platona mm-hmm. e, i w, wiedzą, e, że ci stworzyli triadę. Prawda, dobro, piękno, mm-hmm. a Jezus zamienił to w genialny sposób na jedno słowo miłość. Mm-hmm. My students, uh, as students of uh, art, they perfectly know Aristotle, Plato, they are interested in philosophy and they perfectly know that uh, the ancient philosophers created a triad, truth, beauty Prawda. Um, Prawda. and Prawda. Dobro. and good and goodness. goodness. And uh, Jesus came and he created one one tenant one word love not triad but love dochodzą do wniosku że Arystoteles Platon byliby bardzo bardzo zadowoleni z takiego ucznia jak Jezus so students conclude that uh, Aristotle, Aristotle Plato would Socrates be very- Socrates would be very happy having uh, Jesus as a disciple. Chwalą, ateiści chwalą mi Jezusa. So, in fact, atheists praise Jesus. No, to ja się ich pytam, czy ty na pewno jesteś ateistą? So, then I ask, are you really an atheist? Are you really an atheist? There you go. Well, and that's funny because I had asked one of the questions I had thought of asking is, do you consider art a way to introduce people to Jesus? And it sounds like you really do, and that you do it regularly. Viat, thank you so, so much. We've gone a little over our time already, and I, I could talk to you forever, but I've, I know that people have, have carved out a certain amount of time. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Estia and Viat and and um thank you so much and for our for our viewers i'm gonna say goodbye say goodbye to piat we're gonna say goodbye bye to, bye. Bye to those folks now and put them backstage and i'm just gonna finish this up for you um <clears throat> that was an amazing let me get this off of here where is it hold on a second 
hide. There we go. Uh, this has been an amazing mentor meetup. I mean, wow. Please make sure that you look at our social media for um, this month, March. We are, are featuring Piot and his work all month. He did an amazing blog for us. So please go to our website, which is at um, engageart.org um, and take a look at the, his blog, which is all about the a photo shoot that he did. Amazing, amazing work. And as he said, that collaborative piece, which we talk about a lot here at Engage Art, how important that collaborative piece can be when he started working and collaborating with his students and they were joining in what a fulfilling moment that is. And we'd like to um, put a plug in for collaboration because yes, it is a really good thing. I do want to let you know that our next mentor meetup is April 17th with Jason Koch. He was the first place winner in our video arts um, section of Engage Art 2022. And um, it, he did a comedy. So look that up. Uh, and we'll be talking to him. He's young. He is just out of college. He graduated in 2022. And he's just gotten married and moved to Hawaii. So we're going to talk with Jason in Hawaii and learn about his filmmaking process. And you'll see more of his work in April. Um, as long, as far as getting in touch with us, um, you can go take a look at the website, email us at info at engageart.org. Please go find us on, I many of you are probably watching us on Facebook on either our main page or our artist page. And um, I would in, encourage you to be part of both of those communities. The artist page is particularly active with artists of faith. You may find lots of people there that you would enjoy. We also, of course, have our Engage Art app that pushes you scripture every day. Piat talked about the value of being in scripture if you want to be an, an artist of merit and how he speaks to all of his art students, even those who are atheists, about reading the Bible and thinking deeply about these questions. I want to let you know that if you are interested in becoming involved in our ministry, you can talk with Renika about becoming an Engage Art Ambassador, and you can visit with Renika and a whole bunch of other folks from our tribe on March 28th at our Bible Cluster. It's at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, we also have live prayer every second Friday of the month at noon. Um, and our mentor meetups, as I said, are the next to the last Monday here at Facebook Live at noon. Um, and really, the last thing we want to say is thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Piot, for giving us that amazing um, message. I mean, really, much of that could have been a sermon all by itself. And we're so delighted to be able to share the wisdom of these amazing artists with you in these mentor meetups. We hope that today and every day, you will take some time to engage culture, engage scripture, and engage art. Thank you so much. Take care. Till next time.